Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another Steam Deck video. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the, mainly the cons <laughs> involved in uh, dual, dual booting the Steam Deck with Windows 10. Obviously you can do Windows 11. The, my, <laughs> my overarching concerns are going to be the same regardless of if you use Windows 10 or Windows 11. So I'll very, well, I will show you here. I haven't tried, have a, haven't had a chance yet to try and do the uh, HDMI out and that sort of thing on here, but um, I will go through some some stuff with you for this. So this is running off of the SD card in the uh, Steam Deck, so I used a separate SD card to install Windows on there. Now that is a pain in the backside, really, to get started because I had to use a few different programs. In the end, I ended up using a program that I have used quite regularly and that I already had on my computer, which is Rufus. And you can install Windows, uh, Windows to Go, it's called, um, on a SD card, USB stick, whatever it happens to be. So it should go about saying that on the SD card, <laughs> it is rather slow. It reminds me cripplingly of trying to use a hard disk drive on a computer and, uh, and that's sort of how it feels so yeah bear that if you remember those days bear that in mind a bit spoiled nowadays having st stupidly fast ssds even like the stupidly fast ssd that's in this as well um compared to a hard drive it makes huge difference because <laughs> lots of stuff is not more difficult so i think a couple of a couple of little things that weren't too much of an issue you gotta download your drivers and that sort of thing before or it's helpful if you install it if you move it across on your sd card usb whatever um, external hard drive whatever it is that you're using for the steam deck the issue comes when you try to install the apu drivers now i've not played any games on this yet um, i'm not even at that point yet i'm at the stage where i have only just this second <laughs> had the outer worlds confirm that it's installed and everything else so i haven't actually used anything as of yet uh, on here it's um fine is the the nicest way i can put it i'm trying to get up the task manager so you use the touch pads to move around you probably you probably only just made that out on the camera um and it works sometimes and then if it's like if there's heavy utilization on the deck it then decides to stop working which is, as I say, pretty annoying, and then you end up having to use the touch screen. Um, now, part of the issue with the utilization is the utilization of the disk rather than the CPU, GPU. So if I'm moving it now, and it's not actually moving the mouse again. So it's temperamental in that regard. Um, certainly, if you were docking it, it would be a lot better because you'd have a mouse and keyboard, which actually may feed into the, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in a minute of the best sort of use case for this so um i had yeah basically this disc has been pegged 100 percent pretty much the whole time while i've been trying to install windows updates and obviously I, yeah that, that is what it is but then also install games verify those the the uh, game files and that sort of thing uh, i've also moved to have four gigabytes of the memory directly dedicated to the gpu that's the maximum you can do. This has got 16 gigabytes of RAM anyway. If you're going to be using it for gaming and that sort of thing, then it makes sense to move that allocation around. Um, but I'm going to try and launch the Outer Worlds. So the Outer Worlds is the game I was going to use, or I will be using, to compare Steam OS and the Windows OS. Now, I haven't actually performed the first time install yet, so this may well actually take quite a while. Um, but hopefully it will load up. <laughs> not, the, not that I'm going to be showing any of that because, like I say, I've got to do some more work in terms of getting the capture card and what have you to work. But it took literally hours to download. Now, not too surprising because the Outer Worlds is quite a big game. I do have pretty good internet, though, um, and it probably took three, four times the amount of time it would have done on my main computer, or at least even just on the Steam Deck uh, OS. But that's due to the speed limitations of the SD card. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think about, <laughs> so basically it's like trying to run your Steam Deck on a on a hard drive. Now, there is a course of ways you could do it. We've got a Type-C connector at the top there that we could use, and that could then be configured to use a um, external M.2 SSD. 
at, I don't know what sort of speed, but you certainly get like Gen uh, USB 3, Gen 1, so 5 gigabit a second, which would be much better, much faster than the SD card. Um, but then it's how do you administer it? So for me, the best thing I thought the best way would be just have it on, on, the, S, on the SD card um, rather than using the Type-C port. So if I'm using the SD card, I can uh, take that out and then put my other one in, which is here, which has got all my Steam OS games on there. And then I could just switch out an almost in effect dual boot by depending on which SD card I end up putting in. Um, because of how slow Windows is on the SD card, it seems like that's not strictly possible. So <laughs> well, no, it is possible whether it's uh, worth doing or not, maybe an, an, another matter. Um, but you know, you should be fine with hard drives. Once once stuff has loaded in, it works well. Just depends what type of impact that will have on games. Like I can say I haven't had a chance to test it, so I'm not sure. But I am gonna, I am going to unfortunately persevere with this for a bit just to see what kind of results I do get. This is a bit more of a preliminary video, I suppose. Luckily, the sound and everything else is working, which is quite nice. Um, I'd be interested to see if the actual controls work or not. Uh, do I still have my, I don't have my save game? So we'll let it load in. <laughs> we'll see how long that takes. It might be surprisingly quick. I don't know. Um, but Steam have certainly done some really good work on the Steam OS utilizing um, the SD card, you know, for the game storage. And I think we've spoken about that several times on the channel. So, you know, that's something that is genuinely impressive. Um, the more reasonable way you could dual boot. Actually, it wasn't too bad. That was pretty quick. Although those textures loading in, not great. Um, <laughs> but let me see if I can... Oh, that is stuttery. Gosh, let me move the thing. You can see. Oh, this looks all right now. But when it's loading in new textures and things, it is... Oh, that is, this is... This might be very painful to use and actually may well invalidate any sort of results I could get, but we'll try with some. I'll try it with some benchmarks and stuff. Even if, um, even if the gameplay element isn't great, we'll see. The jury's out on it, of course. Um, but yeah, the other way you could have is uh, to have your Type C dock in here, and then have an external SD, um, SSD or um, not SD, SSD or NVMe, uh, ex external NVMe plugged into that with your Windows uh, portable on there. Because, like I say, faster speeds, um, but you could only use it on the dock while you were um, at your desk, so to speak, or at a desk. Um, that might well be the better way of using it. I don't know. No, we're, we're with Windows, SteamOS on the go, Windows when it's docked. Uh, but of course, you've got the um, the Linux backend on here as well, natively. So that would be down to each other, but down to each person's preference. But yeah, I don't know. I wanted to give it a go, put Windows on it um, without messing around with the actual internal OS because I do actually quite like it. I think it works quite well. But there are, of course, some game compatibility that you could potentially get around by having the um, Windows installation on there. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Basically, don't do this. <laughs> you can if you want to, but oh, it just takes forever to download anything. Um, the better idea would be, like I say, to utilize the Type-C port on the dock and do it that way. I don't know if that's something I'm realistically going to do. Uh, it's probably unlikely. I imagine that if I'm able to find some value in the SD card and it just about works, uh, i.e. there's certain things I want to play using Windows or certain things I want to be able to do through Windows, then I may well um, download all that stuff and just get it set up and leave it as it is on the on the separate SD card. But in terms of being able to do some comparisons and stuff, I think that will be, that will be fine as long as everything else works. But yeah, um, hopefully, I'd, I have a feeling that this video may raise more questions than it gives you answers. So my apologies for that off the bat, but do feel free to hit me with any questions or especially if there's stuff that you want testing. Uh, if I've got access to it, then I don't mind doing that. Um, especially now I've got it. I'm over the pain of actually getting the APU drivers installed 
which I forgot to mention that actually, that was the biggest hurdle and I'm not 100% sure how I fixed it. So yeah, there's that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit me up with comments, questions. I'll do my best to answer them as always. I thought there's a bit of artifact in there, sorry. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see what this is like now. So there'll probably be another, there certainly will be another follow-up video, I should say, you know, on the Windows versus SteamOS performance. It may well just be the Outer Worlds, though, that I do. Uh, it just depends how long. Uh, I just want, I wanted something where I could adjust the frame rate and lock the frame rate down, that sort of thing, to have a bit of a, a tinker around. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully... I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.